Hello and welcome to another mod spotlight. In this spotlight we will be covering Tinker's Construct, the basics. We won't be getting into the crazy tool combinations that are available, we'll just be going through the blocks, how to build a smeltery, etc, etc. Alright, so the first thing that you'll be doing in Tinker's Construct, more than likely, is you'll be building these three stations, the tool station, the part builder, and the stencil table. These are all built with either a log in the case of the part builder in a, in a pattern, planks in a pattern, or a crafting table in a pattern. Now those are just the three basic things. The uh, tool table allows you to build basic tools. The part builder allows you to create parts with patterns. So let me grab some pattern. Like, let's say we wanted to make ourselves a pickaxe. Grab that. Actually, let's do shovel since that's a two-parter. Shovel and a tool rod right there. Now let's say we want to be fancy and make it out of flint because flint is now fancy. Just stick the uh, material that you want in the part builder and grab it out and there you go. Now uh, f the tool rod only uses 0.5 of the material so you get a flint shard out of it which is half a flint so if you had two flint shards for example you could combine them hold on that's from another thing well you can't combine them but you could for example stick them there and you could get a flint tool rod for the price of half of a uh, flint alright anyway onward and outward to the tool station let us build ourselves a shovel you just take the tool rod and the shovel head and you now have yourself a flint shovel alright so tinker tools um, are very similar to normal tools except that when they break they don't actually break they just go from durability whatever their number is to durability broken uh, let's switch into creative right I mean uh, survival right now and get ourselves some dirt just to dig All right, three let's get three durability now alright so our uh, tinker tool is now a little bit worn grab ourselves some flint because that is the primary resource used in making it then we can either repair it on here by just putting the uh, web uh, the tool in the tool slot and then the material excuse me the material well oh, excuse me the material that is the main primary thing in the one of these two slots to repair it and look at that it's back to full health alright so let's get rid of this uh, stuff because it's no longer necessary to create the crafting station which it is very simple just get crafting tables, place down one, place the crafting table in the crafting GUI, and you have yourself a crafting station. You can also craft a crafting station slab, which looks exactly like that. So you can do that with uh, all the Tinker stations, make slab versions, which are, which is nice. Alright, so onward to the smeltery, which is the main portion of Tinker's construct and the main focus you have two different types of of smeltery combinations tinkers construct you have the uh, seared bricks made from slime soil and seared bricks made from grout I personally prefer the grout because the brown version is a little bit harder to acquire because you have to go to the nether because it requires nether wart and soul sand and gravel whereas the grout version the gray version only requires uh, sand clay and gravel alright so here are the various components this is a casting table you put a, a cast in it so cast th these type of casts right here I'll explain how you make the cast then you have the casting basins which essentially turns molten metals into blocks of uh, material you have the smeltery controllers these uh, are one of the necessary pieces that you need 
and if your structure is invalid as you can see with my NEI thing it says invalid structure next you have the smeltery drains and then you have the various components for the rest of it you can use uh, seared bricks, seared stone, seared cobblestone, seared paver, seared uh, cracked bricks, seared road, seared uh, fancy bricks, seared bricks chiseled, or chiseled. Now, um, the easiest way to do it is just use seared bricks if you're going for this kind of look. But another way that you can do it is, uh, let's get rid of that real quick. Cobble. Oops. Uh, we need a casting basin. Stick a cobblestone in there, and then the rest of the cobblestone in there. And we'll come back to that in a second. But um, the smelteries are made in various formats. There is the three by three center area, and then you can leave the corners open. Each smeltery must have a smeltery controller, a tank of some variety. See, uh, tinkers. They can either be the seared tank, seared glass, or seared window for either type. Those are the three different types of tanks that the, the smeltery will accept. Each one holds uh, 4,000 millibuckets or four buckets worth of liquid. Uh, you power the smeltery via lava, and I just have a lava drum with a transfer node from Extra Utilities going into the seared tank for infinite um, lava uh, just just for demonstration purposes. Now each ore that you have, let's uh, grab ourselves some iron just for demonstration purposes. Each iron ore, or any ore for that matter, will make two ingots worth of molten metal so doubling your metal output as opposed to uh, only getting one if you put it in a regular furnace. Now we'll come back to that and I'll show you that it goes from zero iron to two iron. But anyway, back to over here, which this is the five by five center, five blocks wide by five that uh, wide. Now a way, another way to get seared uh, bricks or seared cobblestone is uh, Get seared uh, stone by sticking cobblestone inside the smeltery and it melts down. And then you can pour the seared, liquid seared stone over, say, cobblestone to get some seared cobblestone. And you can do that with all the various types of chiseled, block, road, whatever. You can do that for all those to get seared versions of it. Just uh, if you want different or easier to get. Um, uh, smeltery combinations or bigger ones because collecting all the grout to make all the seared bricks is pretty darn hard um, unless you find a nice place with a lot of clay. Alright, now let's go back to the 3x3 three three and look at that. The iron has melted down and, it, and you now have two ingots. To get uh, materials out like I demonstrated with the seared stone, you just have a smeltery drain connected to a smeltery faucet and it will output the materials. So since we have seared stone in there we can just dump the seared stone directly into the casting basin and we get ourselves a seared smooth stone. Alright, in the last smeltery over here is a 7x7, seven seven, the largest uh, smeltery that you can make for a multi-block structure. Now the random different colors is just to show you that the smel the different types of seared can work together and don't cause any issues. Now let's say um, we want to make our smeltery bigger. So right here we only have access to 25 blocks. But if I do that, we now have access to 50 blocks. If I do this, we now have access to 75 slots. And again, 100, because each layer that I'm doing up on this 5x5 five five is adding 25 unit capacity. The 3x3 three three would add 9, and the 7x7 seven seven would add 49 per layer. I personally prefer the 5x5 five five because it's a good, uh, good, easy 
medium between the 3x3 which is too small to work with and the 7x7 which is extremely resource intensive to create. Alright, moving onward we have the um, seared glass which is just a different version of the seared tank and the casting channel. Alright, so in this seared glass we have 4,000 units of molten iron and this casting table over here. Rather than moving the casting table over there, we can make these things called casting channels, which will transport the molten whatever to the casting table and create ourselves an ingot. Pretty nifty. As long as we're on the uh, topic of casting tables, this is how you make ingots. You make yourselves an ingot cast, and that's what you do, cast. Now let's say we want to make ourselves a pickaxe head, so let's grab ourselves that, and a pickaxe head. Look at that. We now have ourselves an iron pickaxe head. This is how you create metal tool heads, by using the molten metal into a casting table with the cast of the correct type, or the type that you want. Next up, we have the wooden rails, which is a tinker's construct version of the Minecraft rails, but it's pretty nice because, let's be honest here, the normal rails are pretty expensive requiring 6 iron each, whereas the wooden rails are very cheap requiring 6 wood and 1 stick. Now, let's just put, turn on the booster tracks and I'll lightly tap that and lightly tap that. The difference between the two tracks in terms of distance traveled via minecart is almost negligible. The the uh, wooden rails will go a little bit further, about one block less than the track rails with the same boost. All right, let's set ourselves today and go over to here. This is consecrated soil, one of the things that you can make in Tinker's Construct. Consecrated soil, uh, well, actually when I set it back to midnight, and set the difficulty to normal. Let's stick ourselves a, zomb a zombie in there. We have ourselves a couple zombies in there. They're ch just chilling. But this is consecrated soil. Every once in a while, they will take damage from the consecrated soil because consecrated soil will damage the undead. See, that guy took one unit of fire damage after standing around on the consecrated soil. Alright, so that is one use of consecrated soil. The other is by adding it to a weapon as a modifier, but we'll get into that in the next episode. As for now, I'm going to show you the rest of the blocks that are available in Tinker's Construct. One of the things that you have available to you is grout. Um, grout is the main component in the seared bricks. And then you have uh, the various berry bushes. These are the essence berry bushes, which when collected give you concentrated essence berries and they will give you experience when right clicked pretty nifty the other type of berry bushes are iron gold copper tin and aluminum and they will give you ore berries of the various types that they are like iron gives iron etc etc now these ore berries are pretty nice because they uh, each ore berry equals one nugget. So if you get yourself a large farm of these various ore berry bushes, you can have a infinite renewable resource of metals. Next up we have rough brownstone and brownstone road. Brownstone is uh, when you mouse over it. Let's grab that in NEI. When you mouse over it, you run a little bit faster on it. And the brownstone road, you run pretty fast on it. So I have these long roads set up, and I'm going to sprint. This is a little bit faster than normal sprinting, as evidenced by this. You can tell because the FOV doesn't get pushed out nearly as much, and we traveled that distance quite a bit faster. Now the brownstone road is extremely fast. Look at us go. So that those are the roads so let so if you need to get somewhere in a hurry brownstone road is 
pretty ridiculous in terms of movement speed. Next up we have the Poonjai Sticks. I am not exactly sure if that's how you pronounce it, but that's what I call it, the Poonjai Sticks. Now the Poonjai Sticks are crafted from sugar cane, and you just place them on the ground and look at that. You step on them, they give you, snow, they give you the slowness debuff, and they do damage. Now each Poonjai Stick can be stacked up uh, either one, uh, one per block or up to five per block. Now each uh, each added Poonjai stick to the single block will increase the damage that they do, like this one was doing about one heart or half a heart every tick, whereas this one is doing a heart and a half. So if you want to protect your base from mobs, just craft yourself some Poonjai sticks from sugarcane and put them all around your base and you will have essentially cactuses that don't destroy items when items are on top of them. See? did not destroy the item, so you can make a mob farm with Poonjai sticks. Next up we have the barricades, which are crafted from two logs. The barricades are stackable up to four times. This is one, two, three, and four. And they look kind of like wooden fences, but the nice thing about them is that they are only one high, so you can just jump straight over them. Now the barricades are far more blast resistant than normal, uh, than normal fences, so that's also an added benefit. I believe they have uh, cobblestone or a little bit higher durability as opposed to blasts um, when they are fully upgraded to their number four. Next we have the SDXs. The SDXs, when you apply a redstone pulse, will disappear for me, but give it a little bit and then they will explode like TNT but with a much larger radius. The difference between this and TNT is that all item blocks are dropped, not destroyed. So. If you want to go mining and clear out a large area, just craft yourself a few SDXs, set up some redstone, and get yourself all the materials in the area. Now, just to show you that the blue one does the exact same thing, go over here, and again, it just disappears for me because whatever reason. But then it'll explode and do a area that is approximately the same size as the green one. So there is no difference between the SDXs. and SDX just to show you that they're pretty cheap it's just TNT and a slime ball alright or a blue slime ball if you uh, have the blue slimes from the slime islands next up we have the various modifiers available to us for our tools I'll go into the, these modifiers in greater detail in the next episode but pretty much ball of moss repairs necrotic bone heals you Lava crystal. The lava crystal will add auto smelting to your tool. Consecrated soil increases damage to undead. Redstone increases the speed of your tool. Quartz increases the damage. You can also increase the number of modifiers by adding a block of gold and a diamond, an enchanted golden notch apple in a block of diamond, or another star to the tool that allows you to add a maximum of three total modifiers. These are the books that you get uh, in Tinker's Construct. You start out with uh, materials in you and you just craft them in a crafting grid to get the next volume and they tell you what you, uh, what to do with this mod. So let's uh, switch to that and grab all these books. So materials in you tells you how to get started and the mo armor modifiers. Materials in you tells you how to make the various tools, what they do, and the, what each modifier does in greater detail. Mighty smelting tells you how to make the very uh, how to make the uh, smeltery. The tinker's weaponry tells you how the ranged weapons are created and work. And the diary of a tinker is a log of a anonymous tinker as they go through the learning process of learning Tinker's Construct. Alright, so um, the last thing that I'm going to talk about in this episode is the Traveler's Gear. The Traveler's Gear is pretty nifty. Let's grab ourselves the Traveler's Gear. Alright, so the Traveler's Gear, when equipped, will, uh, if I had the keybinds not overlapping, would allow you to zoom in and uh, or to swap the hotbar with uh, the Traveler's Goggles. They also provide a small amount of protection. 
the traveler's belt here let's uh, go into non-creative goes, goes right there and when you press B we'll swap your hotbar as you can see I don't have anything on my hotbar now when I press B again and get rid of the waypoint ad my hotbar comes back so that's pretty nifty uh, the traveler's glove allows you to dig faster with your hand so like I stick that there and I am now mining a little bit faster on the sandstone than I would normally. Let's take that off. Next up you have the traveler's boots which goes in the boot slot. The traveler's boots add a small amount of protection and the ability to walk up one high block increments without a problem. Next up is the traveler's wings which allows you to jump twice as high. Pretty nifty. Next up is the Traveler's Vest, which allows you to swim a little bit faster and adds a small amount of protection. And lastly, the Traveler's Goggles, which I've already talked about, goes on your head and also adds a small amount of protection. Now these are just the basic versions. In the upgraded versions, let's put these back. Um, right here, we have that, 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 that and that. Alright, I'm gonna start with the boots first because the boots have the most different enchants that you can put on them. You can put on water walking, slimy soles, and lead boots. Now let's look at um, and pistons uh, for double jump and quadruple and triple. Uh, so these are the uh, one of every kind but uh, slimy soles can be upgraded to level 3 um, in that that will let slimy souls let you fall greater distance before you take damage so let's grab these slimy souls stick them on our boots go to creative jump up to here this would normally be about fatal right up here but look at that I only took a single heart of damage with the slimy soul three boots and I bounced up pretty fun hard and that's pretty cool so that's what the slimy soul does. The lead boots enchant will allow you to walk underwater. Uh, they they take away your ability to swim, but they uh, also, I believe, remove the movement penalty or lessen the movement penalty while walking underwater. They also give you a small amount of knockback resistance. The last upgrade that you can uh, the last upgrade that's on these boots is water walking, and that allows you to walk on water as you would expect. Now the other uh, boot type that there are is these boot types right here the quadruple jump boots I added three uh, three sets of the pistons to it unfortunately they don't work right now I'm spamming the space bar and that's not working that's just a bug in this version of Tinker's Construct and I can guarantee it's a bug in that in this version of Tinker's Construct because I uh, installed a brand new version of Minecraft brand new version of Forge latest version of Tinker's Construct and that was it and the double, triple, and quadruple jump did not work so unfortunately that stuff is broken at the moment uh, next up we have the Traveler's Gloves with Haste now Haste is just adding redstone to your glove and let's stick the glove on there I've updated this quite a bit with a lot of redstone and as you can see it is much faster at punching through this uh, sandstone now unfortunately we're not getting any of the materials because hand doesn't do much for uh, stone normally but if I put that there um, hmm, hold on one second while I grab some dirt put down the dirt look at that so much faster than normal if I take the glove off it goes back to the normal so it with the amount of redstone that I put on, I about doubled my punching speed on blocks. Next up we have the Traveler's Vest. The two different enchantments that you can put on there are Stealth and Perfect Dodge. Perfect Dodge decreases the chance that you'll be hit by uh, swords, arrows, what have you. Um, they'll just cause it to, not, uh, to miss essentially and not do damage. The other aspect is Stealth. Now Stealth, when you're shifting, you go invisible. The unfortunate side effect of that is you'll just have a floating suit of armor. Like, let's put all this stuff on. 
and then shift. Look at that. It's not exactly inconspicuous. Nope, not exactly inconspicuous at all. So while it does give you the ability to go invisible, that is only really useful for taking your face off of the mini-map. Uh, the perfect dodge is actually the thing that you want on your uh, Traveler's Vest. Next up, we have the Traveler's Wings, which are currently maxed out. The two different things that you can put on the Traveler's Wings are Featherfall, which... Um, there, let's jump up a little bit. Take off the boots right there. And look at that. I fall to the ground slowly. So if you put feather fall on the wings, that negates the need to have the slimy soles. And they also allow you to jump higher. You can also apply the piston um, upgrade to the traveler's wings for double jump and triple jump. But unfortunately, like I've said, that is currently broken in this release of Tinker's Construct. Alright, coming back to here. The last thing that I want to show you is the ladders. Tinker's Construct adds its own ladders, which is made by uh, making a ladder out of stone rods, which is just two stone or two cobblestone put on top of each other like planks, and you get some sticks. So. Finally, there's a use for all that worthless cobblestone. You can make some ladders and some stone tools, or stone rods, or what have you. It's pretty nifty. In any case, that uh, last thing that I want to show you is all the various tools, and then we'll get into how to make the various tools and the modifiers and all the nifty things that can go into them. First, we have the pickaxe, then the shovel, then the hatchet, then the broadsword, which acts just like a normal sword, the longsword, which when equipped allows you to the right click ability allows you to leap forward so that's pretty nifty and if you do it in the air you get pretty far so let's stick that back in there next up is the iron rapier the rapier will ignore all armor and just punch straight through it but it has very low damage unless you upgrade it quite a bit the iron dagger is just a cheap version of the sword that does small amounts of damage and its right click is toss. You just toss. So that's pretty nifty. So the iron dagger is over there. Next up we have the iron cutlass. The iron cutlass is made exactly like the broadsword or the longsword but with a full guard instead of a wide guard. I mean, uh, it's the... Here, let's go over to the stencil table. I have it. It is the wide guard, yes. It's the wide guard, not the full guard or the cross guard. The uh, Cutlass also has the added benefit of having a 10% critical strike chance regardless of uh, the situation, so you don't have to be jumping to get crits. Next up is the Iron Mattock, which is a combination of a shovel and a hatchet. Um, it also can till dirt. Next up we have the Frying Pan, which will deal damage. But when shift and right clicking on the ground gives you a frying pan which will allow you to cook up to eight things at once. So that's pretty nifty. Stick that back in there. Next is the battle sign which is just another weapon but comes with the added benefit of having one more modifier slot than normal. Next is the iron lumber axe. The lumber axe acts like a normal hatchet except that it's a little bit slower. The benefit to the lumber axe is it will cut down trees completely, or it will mine a 3x3 three th uh, three area of wood and materials when uh, uh, mined. So let's grab ourselves some dirt, a sapling, and some bone meal, and some planks. Alright, so let's put the dirt there, sapling there, and grow. Okay, so now we have ourselves a fully grown tree. The uh, lumber axe mines a little bit slower than the normal uh, hatchet. This is uh, It also is slowed down a little bit because I currently have a uh, tree capitator installed. If you didn't have tree capitator, it would be a little bit faster, but it would still do this. Completely dissipates the tree. So. Yay, I got some wood and I got lots of fireworks. 
Alright, so that's Lumber Axe. Next up is the Cleaver. The Cleaver is the most damaging weapon that Cle Tinker's Construct has available to you as a melee weapon. It also gives you uh, Mining Fatigue 3 when wielding it, so it takes a lot longer to punch through things, but it, the main thing is, is it makes you a lot slower to punch. It also has a guard, but it's not effective as the uh, Broadsword's guard is. Next up is the Iron Scythe. The Iron Scythe attacks in a 3x3 three three area. So if I uh, switch to Midnight, grab some zombies, and turn it off peaceful. <laughs> Look at me, I'm attacking a large area! Ah! Alright, so, get back into creative, and peace. Get rid of all that crap. Alright, so that's one of the benefits of the scythe. The other benefit of the scythe is it will harvest crops in a 3x3 three three area, so that is also pretty nifty. Get rid of that. And then we have the iron excavator. The excavator is a Dang it. Excavator. Uh, we don't want a paper one. We're getting an Oracles one for now because that's what I grabbed. Alright, so let's get ourselves some dirt. The dirt. No, that's not dirt. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Alright, so the excavators will mine a three by three area of any shovelable material, so that is pretty nifty. The hammer, on the other hand, when I grab it, will mine a 3x3 three three area of uh, rocks, or whatever. Whatever the metal is able to mine. Next up, we have the iron battle axe. The battle axe, its right click ability allows you to draw back, and holding the right click will give you strength, speed, and jump boost for a longer duration for however long you hold it back. The unfortunate bit is, is it also gives you hunger. So let's just hold back right click. Doop, 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 still holding right click and we now have a 30 second or 25 second strength pot. So let's say you're just walking around. You're just going about your business. If you had a battle axe, you could just hold right click and go about your business exploring and then when you need to attack, let go of right click and give yourself a long strength potion, jump boost, and speed boost and you can just do this repeatedly. The only problem is it gives you an ever increasing hunger uh, debuff. So that's pretty nifty. Next up we have the short bow. Short bow. Uh, this one's gonna suck. But let's, let's grab ourselves some iron arrows. The short bow acts just like a normal bow. It looks a lot better and shoots its arrows just like normal. So, boop. So that's the short bow. Stick that on there. The long bow takes far longer to draw. I mean, just look at that. Oh. The power! It also shoots a heck of a lot farther and a lot faster. That is useful because in Tinker's Construct, the ranged weapons deal damage based on the, the flight speed and on the weight of the projectile. So a longbow will do more damage than a shortbow. The only drawback is, is it takes quite a bit longer to draw back the uh, arrow. Next up we have the shurikens. The shurikens are pretty nifty in that they are a ranged weapon that are made with four dagger so uh, knives and you just can hold right click and just toss them. But they don't have much range. They also do very little damage when they reach the end of their range while they do the most when you, they're, a mob is standing directly in front of you. Next up we have the iron javelins. The javelins are a melee weapon that you can punch with or when you hold right click, toss. So that's pretty nifty. 
Next up, we have the iron throwing knives. The iron throwing knives suck, pretty much. Uh, just throwing this out there, the throwing knives suck. The only benefit to them is you can hold right click, draw back, and then toss them. So, they're pretty cheap to make, but they do a very low amount of damage. Next up, we have the crossbows and their bolts. Alright, so the crossbows are made uh, with a lot of parts. I'll get to, them, to that into the next episode. But the crossbows are ridiculous in terms of the damage. Like, this iron crossbow with basic iron bolts are doing 17 and a half hearts, 15 damage, just straight up. The main drawback to uh, crossbows is their draw speed. They are incredibly long for the metal ones. This one is a 5 second drawback, like I clicked right click, and it's still drawing back, and now it's ready to fire. But the uh, benefit to the crossbows is they shoot the bolts very quickly, and they also have the most armor penetration of any of the uh, ranged weaponry. So that's it for part one of Tinker's Construct. In part two, I will get into getting some, getting into the combinations of the various types of materials that you can use for the Tinker's tools and their weapons, and what I believe are personally the best uh, materials to use in terms of uh, availability and damage. Until, but that will have to wait until the next episode. Until then, bye bye now.